Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to create this stylus grass shader in Godot. It's a very simple shader, but you can change the height, the width of the blades, you can also change the density, how much grass you want, and you can also change the wind strength as well as the color of the grass. So, to begin with, I'm going to create a new scene in Godot. And in this scene, I'm going to search for Mesh Instance 3D. Once I have that, in the Mesh section of the Mesh Instance, I'm going to look for a Plane Mesh. Once I've chosen my Plane Mesh, I'm going to click again on Mesh. And this is a very important step we need to do before creating the shader. We want to make sure that this Mesh is subdivided. So we have two variables, subdivide width and subdivide depth. And here I'm going to put a value of 200. This is what I like to do, but you can change that to have a lower value or a higher value. The more subdivision you have, and the more grass you can have on your mesh. In the file system, I'm going to right click and create a new resource. And in there, I'm going to look for a shader and specifically a shader material. I'm going to call this grass shader and I'm going to save that. And in this new material, I'm going to double click, see the parameters of the shader. We can see that in the shader variable, we have nothing. I'm going to click on it and choose new shader. I'm going to give the name grass shader and create. Now we have the code for the shader in here. And if this is your first time with shaders, you can see we have two main functions, vertex and fragment. The function vertex is called for every vertex of the material and fragment is called for every pixel. So this is where we're going to change the colors and vertex is where we will have the logic to make, create the grass and to make it move. I don't need this light function at the bottom that is already commented on. So to begin with, we have a shadow type special. This is the default in Godot. We can just leave it here. And right under that, I'm going to write render mode and I'm going to say it's unshaded and callback. This line changes the way the shader is rendered. In that case, I want it to be unshaded. Once I have that, I can start creating variables that I will be able to modify to change the aspect of the grass. First variable is a uniform float. In this case, uniform means that I won't be able to change that in the code, but I can change the parameter. This first one is going to be called blade height, and its default value will be 0.5. Now we have blade height, so I'm going to create a second uniform float, which will be the blade width. And here, the variable is going to be slightly different, it's going to be 0 0.005. Now we have a way to change the height and the width of the blade. Now I also want to change the density of the grass. So in that case, I want to see how much grass will be spawned. The default value will be 0 0.1 and this value will scale from 0 to 1. Now, we're going to create other parameters, this time to change the colors of the blade. And the first parameters we created were to change the size, the density, pretty much the general aspect of the blades. Now we want to change the color. In that case, I don't want floats, I want to create vector 3. I'm going to write uniform vector 3 base color, which is of type source color. I'll give it a default value of 0, so vector 3 is 0 comma, zero, and once again, zero. And the second variable would be uniform vector three tip color, which would be the color at the tip of the graph. So once again, this is pretty much the exact same vector three and the values would be just by default zero. We would be able to change that in the editor. Now, we've been creating uniform floats and vector 3 so far. Now I'm going to create a varying float, which I'm going to call height ratio. This is what we're going to use to scale the color of the blade and also when to spawn blades. This is a varying float because this is a value that will be changed in the shader code. We won't be able to change that in the editor compared to the uniform variables, but we'll be able to change that in the shader. Finally, I'm going to write two last variables, one called uniform float wind strength, which would be the strength of the wind to make sure that the grass blades are not still. And finally, a uniform float random multiplier, which I'm going to give a default value of 10. This will act as some form of noise or random value that we can just change and will, uh, once the grass is created, 
If we change this variable, it's just gonna look slightly different. So it kind of adds some procedural aspect to the generation of the grass. So this is it for all the parameters. Now we have those, we can start writing the code. And before writing the, writing the code in the vertex function, I'm gonna create a quick and simple function. It will return a float. And I'm gonna call that uh, rend. This function will have one parameter, which is gonna be of type vector2. The name is gonna be coordinates. What we want to put here is a set of coordinates. And this will help creating a random number. This whole function is just to add variation to the grass. We're gonna return a fraction, and fraction will be the fraction of a sine function, which also takes a parameter, a dot product. So in the dot product, we want the coordinates, we want to use the vector to coordinates argument we have, and we want to access the y, the x and y coordinates specifically. The second one will also be a vector two, And I will give it a default value of 1 and 1. All of that will be multiplied by another value. In that case, I'm also going to give it a random value of 1 so far. This whole function, which might seem very complicated, is just to create some pseudo random generation. And it actually is not from me. This is a function you can find quite often online. And it has specific values in it, which are not just one. And the values here are populated that with ones, but you can put any random values you want in here. What it's gonna do is just change the generation. And because this function is not something I actually came up with, this is something you can find online quite easily. And as a matter of fact, it is not really sure what the source of that function is, but it has some specific values you can use, which are kind of the default values for this random generation. So I'm just going to use those values here and you can just pause the video and copy and paste them. All of that is just something I'm going to use to make the grass look more natural. So in the vertex function, I'm going to create a float, which is going to be a random number. And to get that random number, I'm going to use this function we just created. As a parameter, since I need a vector too, I'm going to use the vertex parameter. So I'm just have to type vertex in all caps, dot x and z, multiplied by the random multiplier we created. This random multiplier variable we have adds another level of randomness. By having this random multiplier, this is the value we can change in the editor to add some randomness to the grass blades. Now, what I want to do is write a if statement. I want to check that if this random number we have is bigger than one minus the variable density, then I will be able to generate a blade of grass. Otherwise, if it's not, I won't generate this grass. So this adds to the density. This is why the value density is used here. And we can see why this value is between zero and one is because we're checking one minus density. The whole point of it is just so we can generate more grass if we want to with a higher density or less grass if we want to. All of that is just a simple way to make sure we can generate blade or not depending on the value we have. So if that's the case, if we want to generate blade, here's the code. I'm gonna write a float called h, which is gonna stand for height. And because I want to generate some height, I'm gonna use this variable who created blade height. I'm gonna multiply that by 0 0.5 plus random, plus a random value. And in that case, I'm gonna reuse this random function and as an argument, I'm gonna pass a vector to, which is gonna be vertex.x and vertex.y. As a matter of fact, I just made a mistake. This is not vertex x, this is vertex z and vertex.x. And we're gonna multiply that by 0 0.5. Now that I have this value h, I can start working on generating the blade. So to do that, I'm gonna access y, x, and z from the vertex. So I'm gonna start with y. So vertex.y will simply be this float h we just created, which stands for the height of the grass blade. So this float h determines the height of the blade. Now we want to create x and z, so vertex.x, in that case it's gonna be plus equal sine function. In this sine function, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna write random 
which is the random number we have from before, multiplied by the random multiplier. Once again, this is just a way to randomize everything and make it look more organic. And I want to multiply this by the width of the blade, because the x-axis works the width of the vertex. Once again, since we're still working on the width, the width is actually on two levels. We have the x-axis, but you also have the z-axis. So what I'm going to write here is the exact same thing for vertex.z plus it equal sine, once again random, multiplied by random multiplier, and multiply all that by the width of the blade. This way we can change the width parameter to change the width of our blade. And now I'm going to say that the height ratio, our varying float, we can finally access it and change it. We're going to say that this we're going to assign it a value which will be clamped. So I'm going to write, I'm going to use the clamp function. And in this clamp function, it's going to be vertex.y divided by the height of the blade. So blade height times 2. 2 is kind of a random value here that you can change. It just works kind of good for the purpose of this shader. So this is a value I'm going to get, but I need to clamp that between two other values. In that case, it's going to be 0 0.2 and 1. 0.2 being the base of the grass and 1 being the top part of it. So last thing about this vertex function, in the else statement we want to, to make sure that the height ratio is equal to 0. So height ratio has two purposes, so it's used both in the vertex function to generate the blades of grass or not depending on a random value and also to determine the color of the shader. And we're going to do that in the fragment function right now. This is going to be very simple, it's going to be a one-liner. We want to change the color. To access the color of the shader, we access the albedo variable. And we're going to use a mix function, which takes three parameters. We want to mix the base color, and we want to mix the top of the grass color, so tip color. The last parameter determines where we are mixing it, and this is based on the height ratio we created. I'm going to save my scene, and on my mesh instance, I'm going to drag and drop the material we have. And we can see that the grass is here, but it's black. So let's go into the shadow parameters, change the base color to some sort of green, and change the tip color to a darker form. Now we can see our grass is here. It looks nice. However, we do not have any movement. So we'll talk about that in a second. You can see that our parameters are working. If I change the density to a smaller value, we have less uh, blades of grass that are showing. You can change the height of the grass. So when I change the value, we have taller grass. And we can change the width as well. If I change the random multiplier, we can see the grass being spawned is spawned randomly in different position. And finally, we can see that our wind strength value uh, does nothing yet. So we need to change that. To do that, I'm going to create a new float into the if statement in the vertex function called sway. And this will be a simple sign function again, which multiplies time plus vertex.x. This vertex.x will be multiplied by 2.0. This is once again a random value. And I'm going to add to that random times 10. Once again, this is just to randomize and make everything more organic. All of this will be multiplied by the wind strength so we can uh, change it into the editor. So we have our float sway, but we need to add it into the generation of the blade. So in the vertex.x line, I'm going to add the sway to what we had from before. And now we can see the grass is moving. So I'm just going to change some parameters here to make it look better. And we can see our grass is moving quite fast. So the default value of 0 0.2 makes it look nice, but we can have something higher or lower, depends on our need. A value that is too strong might make it look weird, but here we are. Um, those values I have here look quite nice, and we can see our shadow function. Now to add a bit more randomness to all of that, instead of using a sign function in the vertex.z, I'm just going to add a cost function. And this way, I'm swaying everything on the x-axis, but you can move that to sway on the z-axis by changing a few parameters in the float sway instead of using vertex.x we can say vertex.z 
and later on in creating the vertex.z we can just add this way here instead of adding it to the x-axis pretty much can just play around with that depending on what you want to create and like i mentioned before the 2 and 10 value here are just random numbers this is all to make it just look more organic you can change that as much as you want this is just values i use they seem to be working fine so i'm just gonna leave it like that for now so this is it for this tutorial and i will see you in the next one